In this lecture, you will learn about how you can define an intellectual property strategy. You will learn about the uh, six different tasks that uh, can be covered by intellectual property management. And you will learn about the specifics uh, in the software business that intellectual property management has within that software business. The agenda follows the goals that we just presented. So we'll talk about the IP strategy, about you know the overall task and all the subtasks of intellectual property management. And we will drill into the specifics to reach the goals of this lecture. Most of the information presented here relates to a book that was recently published called Profit from Software Ecosystems. So here's our first topic. Uh, we'll look into the definition of IT strategy. And uh, there's basically two views uh, we will look at. One is a structure view, and one is a behavior view. And structure and behavior are two fundamental properties of uh, systems in general, and we'll start with the behavior view now. So from a behavior point of view, a company strategy uh, can be defined as uh, a set of goals and objectives. And um, this is a very formal definition, but goals are basically what uh, you would like to achieve. So for a software company, it's to uh, create revenue from software sales and uh, objective define in which way these goals are achieved. So besides the software vendor goal of uh, selling software, we can define the objective in maximizing the profit or maximizing the, the uh, customer happiness with the product. Now, if we use that uh, for uh, an intellectual property strategy, we can define a sample company IP strategy um, with a goal to uh, create and make use of intellectual property. And the objective can be to maximize the shareholder value So this is the uh, behavior view and a sample IP strategy. Now let's go to the uh, structural view of a software vendor. So here in the structure view, we see the software vendor and its relationships uh, for you know, delivering products, assets, or services. So the main goal of the software vendor is to create and sell software to the customer, uh, which we can see here and um, that relationship is drawn between the software vendor and the customer. Then, in selling software, partners might be uh, involved to uh, position the software, to uh, refer the software, or to resell the software. And uh, in addition, we also have service providers that serve the customer with uh, specific uh, services. So that raises the question, why are we using that structure view uh, to talk about strategy? Um, you know, the reason is pretty simple. We want to make sure that we have complete coverage of uh, the environment of the software vendor and uh, of all the relationships of the software vendor with uh, external parties to be able to uh, provide a complete strategy that covers all the relationships of the software vendor uh, that are relevant for uh, intellectual property. So as you can see, there are six uh, subtasks of IP management. The management of the IP strategy, meaning creating and uh, updating the IP strategy over time. 
the portfolio management, which basically look at, looks at all the intellectual property assets and manages them, gets new ones, divests old ones uh, in the portfolio. And then IP compliance. Uh, this is a task where we make sure uh, that uh, we uh, comply with the rules that we have set for intellectual property handling uh, in a company. Then in the lower part of the slides, uh, IP procurement uh, is very simple. That uh, is a task that takes care of getting the uh, ownership or usage rights for IP in place. And uh, we also have IP creation, uh, where we work on uh, creating uh, intellectual property, uh, either by uh, getting uh, patents filed or by uh, creating uh, software. And then the last of the subtasks is uh, IP monetization. That's the way we create revenue from uh, intellectual property, for example, by licensing the software or by licensing patents uh, from our patent portfolio to other companies.